Hello and welcome to the Daily Climate Show from Koblenz in Germany as floods devastate parts of Western Europe. More than 100 people dead and over a thousand missing as communities in both Germany and Belgium are warned they're still in danger. As rescue efforts continue, already the focus turns to whether the climate crisis is to blame. I'll be speaking to one of the world's leading experts in weather and climate. And the environmental campaigner known as the German Greta tells Sky News governments around the world need to take drastic measures to tackle the climate crisis. Hello and welcome to this special edition of The Daily Climate Show. I'm in Koblenz on the banks of the Rhine and the Mosel rivers in western Germany, an area badly affected by the extreme weather that's hit much of western Europe. Over 100 people have died and many more are missing. And even as the scale of the tragedy emerges, more rain is forecast for today and the weekend. On today's show, we'll be examining the theories around the increasing extreme weather events and ask how prepared we are for them. And we'll speak to Luisa Neubauer, often referred to as the German Greta Thunberg. But first, let's remind ourselves of the terrible images that were the result of two months of rain in just over two days. This is Schult in western Germany, one of the worst hit villages. Several homes collapsed due to flooding after the river there surged into a deadly torrent carrying trees and other debris as it gushed through the narrow streets. In Belgium, floodwaters rushed through the streets of Pepinster after the Vesdre River spilled over its banks. And there were similar scenes in the village of Rospoor in Luxembourg, where flooding left caravans and football stadiums submerged. So that's an idea of the damage caused. Let's take a look now at the situation right across Europe. While well, flooding has hit multiple countries, including the UK, Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Germany's most populous state, North Rhine-Westphalia, has been badly affected with 148 litres of rain per square metre within 48 hours in a part of the country that usually sees about 80 litres in the whole of July. A dam close to the Belgian border, the Rüttelsperr, was flooded overnight. While in the Rheinsieg county, south of Cologne, several villages below the Steinbach reservoir were evacuated over fears a dam could break there. One of the worst affected areas is the state of Rhineland Palatinate, including the mountainous district of Arweiler, where many are thought to have died in flash floods on Thursday. Among the villages hit hardest there is Schult. Several homes collapsed and dozens of people remain unaccounted for. And across the border in Belgium, the cities of Neymar and Liège have been evacuated as the river Meuse bursts its banks. Our climate change correspondent, Hannah Thomas-Peter, joins me now from Liège. Uh, Hannah, what's the situation like uh, where you are? Well, we've moved just outside that city to a village called Pepinster, which is really a village completely upended, built at the confluence of two rivers because, of course, that was useful for moving trade and goods and totally vulnerable when the waters came and the cleanup is ongoing. But we've spoken to many residents here who are in absolutely no doubt that climate change has had a hand in their destruction to their livelihoods and property. Une conséquence du changement climatique, c'est inexplicable, quoi. C'est inexplicable. On a déjà eu des grosses pluies comme ça, mais jamais ça. Et on n'aurait jamais cru. On s'est retrouvé. On n'a même jamais eu. Euh, Nous, on, est, on était au premier plus. étage, on s'est retrouvé au milieu d'un torrent, quoi. Une rivière sauvage. Euh, et c'est la maison de notre voisin qui nous a, qui nous a protégés. Si euh, lui, il n'était pas là, on serait plus là, quoi. We've also interviewed one of the lead authors 
for a report by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the UN body, who happens to be a resident of Belgium, who told us that he was completely shocked that his hometown of Liège would become a cautionary tale, an example of how climate change is coming uh, to the Western world. And he said that we have to understand that although it's very difficult to link directly and definitively climate change with one particular extreme event. Climate change is much uh, is driving the issue, making it much more uh, likely and much more frequent, much more likely that the weather events are going to be uh, extreme. This is what he had to say to us about the link between the two things. There will be no return to the climate that we used to know some 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, the temperature will not decrease, the sea level will not decrease, and there will be no vaccine against climate change. We need to consider and to accept that this is the new normality, that this is the new reality that we have to adapt to. Now the question really for villages uh, like Pepinster and towns and cities all over Western Europe is, is, is about the future. If Western Europe is going to see uh, more of this extreme weather. It's really about adaption, about how we build, where we build, what materials we use, which, which places we put our towns and villages, how we better protect our businesses and livelihoods and critical infrastructure. All of that being considered now by the people who live here who've lost so much. So that's the situation in Belgium. Our Europe correspondent, Michelle Clifford, has the latest from Germany and the village of Arlof in the state of North Rhine, Westphalia. Like thousands across this region, residents of the village of Arlof are absolutely stunned by what's happened. They were shocked by the scale of the flooding, terrified by the sheer ferocity of the water. It tore into houses, ripped off doors, ripped up pavings and roadways. One man told us if anyone had been in his house on the evening of the floods, they would have been killed. And ask people here, as we have done, why they think this has happened, and they say simply climate change, that the weather and the world is changing. And there are growing worries today. There's a reservoir nearby and real fears that it will fail and could consume three villages nearby. Michelle Clifford there in the village of Arlof. So what's behind this extreme weather? Well, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the flooding is a clear indication of climate change. And that's a view shared by many scientists who say, although it's hard to attribute individual weather events to climate change, their frequency and severity is increasing. But land management could also be a factor. For example, the River Rhine has already lost four-fifths of its natural flood plains. And urbanisation can increase flood risk too. More impermeable, hard surfaces prevent rain from infiltrating into the soil below. The increased runoff can create significant flood risk with even moderate rainfall. And the situation is only expected to worsen as a changing climate triggers more extreme rainfall events. But the immediate cause is this. An area of low pressure became stuck over parts of Europe, bringing a near stationary zone of heavy and continuous rain to western Germany. The low pressure system is not moving because it's being held in place by areas of high pressure elsewhere in Europe. Over two months' worth of rain has fallen in the space of two days in the areas affected by flooding. Well, joining me to explain if these devastating floods can be linked to climate change is Professor Sir Brian Hoskins, Chair of the Grantham Institute at Imperial College London and Professor of Meteorology at the University of Reading. Really great to have you on the programme. Thanks for being with us. We keep being told, don't we, that we shouldn't necessarily link individual weather events to climate change. But what do you make of what we're seeing right now in Europe? I think it is really a warning to us. And these sorts of events could possibly happen without us having added greenhouse gases to the atmosphere and global warming of a degree or more. But it, they become much more likely with the warming that we've done. And it's a very strong effect because the atmosphere, if it's six degrees warmer, can hold 50% more water. So the same rainstorm without anything else being different would be 50% stronger. 
Now, it seems to be happening even at a more rapid rate than that would suggest. Is it now a fact of life that we just have to expect more of these extreme weather events? Yes, it is. Um, the heat wave in North America, the cause of that, well, it's partly because there it's been so dry. So what we expect with climate change is more of the droughts and more of the heavy rainfall. And when it's been very dry, then the sun's energy, instead of evaporating water, goes to heat up the air. So that was a major contributor to the heat wave over North America, which wasn't just a degree or so above previous records. It was five degrees above previous records. So the sort of heat waves there and the floods we've seen around the world, and there, not so long ago, a few weeks ago, there were major storms in Japan causing mudslides and, and loss of life. And now we have this in Europe. So we're really getting these warnings from the climate system. It's telling us, my goodness, you better do something because this is only going to get worse. OK, really good to get your thoughts. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, on our data dashboard, you can see how much our planet has warmed since the Industrial Revolution, and it's ticking up the whole time. But as an industrialised country, Germany is heating up twice as fast as the global warming rate, meaning an increased chance of heavy rainfall now compared to before the Industrial Revolution. It is one of the reasons environmental groups took the German government to court recently, saying its climate targets were insufficient to protect future generations. In a groundbreaking ruling, the court agreed, saying politicians must update the legislation to ensure emissions goals are met. Well, among the activists who lobbied for change was Louisa Neubauer. Anna Jones spoke to her earlier. First of all, Angela Merkel has called for a determined battle against climate change. You recently won a case against the German government. So what more do you think needs to be done now? Well, we need more than words. Um, that's it. We see how um, Chancellor Merkel and also other members of the government are really happy and enthusiastic when it comes to talking about what they want to do um, in order to protect us from the climate breakdown. Yet when it comes to action, we see that effectively the government is working towards a three, four, five degree warmer world instead of sticking to 1.5 degree pledges. Well, we need, of course, drastic measures happening now. This must include a rapid um, coal phase out, not stretched until 2038, which would be the current plan of the government, but really making sure that there won't be any coal power plants in Germany running after 2030. We need, an, um, we need a stop of new fossil fuel infrastructure that must include, for instance, the new gas pipeline Nord Stream 2 that is currently um, in, under construction. We need to think about um, if we need new um, large roads, um, if they should be built at all, how do we get more people away from um, combustion engine towards um, electrification on the streets and so on. So uh, there are a million things that need to be done. There are great plans provided by think tanks and economists and other institutions. And it's time for the government really to listen to the science there. And if scientists do attribute definitively uh, the severity of these floods to climate change when they've got all the evidence in the weeks ahead, how might that affect public opinion but also political will there, do you think? Well, we would hope that people wouldn't have to be dying in floods for our government to acknowledge that we are in a climate breakdown. Um, but if it takes those floods, it would be then time, of course, for drastic political measures. Um, we are not hopeful at all about this because we see how, um, well, uh, how resilient the government is when it comes to acknowledging the climate crisis we are in. Um, but yes, of course, we will... Um, pressure them for um, drastic measures, for political consequences coming um, from these catastrophes. Louisa Neubauer, thanks very much indeed. Thank you so much.
Louisa Naubauer speaking to Anna Jones there. Well, just before we go, let me explain uh, exactly where we are. Uh, we're in the town of Koblenz in Germany, and as you can see, we're next to the river here. This is the River Mosul. The Rhine is just around the corner. Now, normally at this time of year, flooding really wouldn't be expected, but as you can see, it's well and truly broken the banks. It's covered the pavement next to the water, and it's covered this road as well. It's lapping up against the, uh, the borders of the town and we've spoken to uh, a number of businesses who uh, are flooded a cafe a restaurant just here basement completely flooded they've got the pumps going they say that occasionally flooding does happen but this is something else altogether and what's particularly worrying for everyone here and in the wider region is that more rain is forecast for later today and over the weekend we will of course keep you up to date on sky news and you can keep up to date with all the latest developments developments on this moving story as well as the day's other climate news on the Sky News website. Just go to skynews.com forward slash climate. And that's all from us this week. But a reminder, you can listen to our podcast over the weekend. In the latest episode of Climate Cast, we explore the role education and family planning can play in the fight against climate change. You can find that wherever you normally get your podcasts from. Plus, you can watch our weekly climate show on Sky News social channels, our app and website. In this episode, the story of the 69-year-old grandpa turning Indonesia's mountains green. Well, thanks for watching. Anna Jones will be back next week.